So what actions do I need to take to reach my goals? What actions do you need to take to reach your goals? For me to reach my goals, I have to set up a new email sequence. I have to fix up the Confident Consulting for the one-to-one practitioner page. And I have to make sure everybody knows about it before Christmas. Mine are all on the computer. Mine are email and landing page. And my other goals, of course, are to have a good time. So I might actually make myself a little packing list. And what are your intentions, goals and expectations for December and January? Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists and practitioners responding directly to the needs of a practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business, something clinical, you'll get the variety you need to enjoy and stay motivated in practice. So thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for our episodes. If you'd like more support, get in contact and I look forward to working with you soon. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. How the devil are you? So it's the end of the month. It happens, doesn't it? Every month has an ending, and that will go on, obviously, ad nauseum. But it's the end of the month, and here we are. So November for you, what has it been like? Now, if you want to use the, it's not a spreadsheet, it's a worksheet, then you will find it at www.geraldineheadley.com. I think it's forward slash podcast, or if you just scroll down the main page, you'll find it at the bottom. You sign up once, and then you always have access to the podcast. If there's any paperwork that I've spoken with anyone about, or I've created a workbook for you, you'll find them all there and the episode number next to them. But I don't think there's an episode number next to the month. You just have to write the month in. So Go and get your worksheet and let's have a bit of a go because we need to reflect and set our intentions for next month. And the end of November, so it is a little bit different to the end of the other months because setting our intentions for December is a little bit different, isn't it? Because we may or may not have Christmas plans or summer holiday plans or winter holiday plans. We may or may not be closing our business for a bit. We may be ramping up depending where we are in the world. It just depends. We're all going to be very different for December for our intentions. So it's a really good idea that you do take that bit of time to think, what are my intentions for December? I'm getting a break personally. I'm going away for two weeks. I leave next week and My son's graduating, so we're going to Canberra for the graduation, and then we're going to slowly travel back to Adelaide and our swag and do some camping. So, you know, a bit of off-roading and have a bit of fun. So my intentions for December are to have a good holiday and um, to really enjoy my time with my son, because very soon holidays with your children as they're growing up and growing older become fewer and fewer and further between. So what are your intentions for the month ahead? So apart from having a really good time and then Yes, I've got Christmas, but I have still already set out my diary. So I've got a couple of days over the month of December where I am seeing people and into January. So I've already allocated those days so that people who need follow-up, clients who need follow-up and mentees who need follow-up have that time available. But when we look back, because we've set our intentions, set out what you intend to do over December and might actually be reaching a little bit into January at this point as well because we won't be having a recap in December. As of today, this is the last one of fortnightly podcasts. We're going to weekly over the summer, over December and January, and then we're going to continue on at weekly because there's a lot of backup. There's a ton, there's 200 and something, almost 300 podcasts sitting there that you can binge on. So figure I'm okay to go weekly now. So what was your biggest win in November? What was the biggest win for me? It was the retreat. So I've been running a virtual retreat with my academy members. So the academy is for business and practice support knowledge community, right? It's a really cheap way of making sure that you have all of the background information you need. It's a great way of connecting with people and having community. So it's closed at the moment. You can't join over Christmas because in December, everyone has a one-to-one with me. So I can't be accepting new people at a time when I'm trying to make sure that the people in the group already have the very best support from me that they can have over this time. So my biggest win as 
I would say last December was the virtual retreat. But my biggest, biggest win, even bigger than my virtual retreat, which went really well and got amazing feedback, was the in-person retreat that I held here in Adelaide. Now, I'd always, always said I was never going to hold a retreat ever. It was not something I wanted to do. There's a lot of work involved in holding a retreat. The profits are for me, that your first one is always non-existent for my first one, actually. But that wasn't the point of it. The point of the retreat for me was not to make money, and it isn't for the one next November either. The point of the retreat was to really support some people who really wanted to be supported, who wanted that time away, wanted to work on their business, who wanted to really get into their business, okay, with a couple of trips out and a bit of fun as well on the side. So I'd always said I'd never, ever, ever hold an in-person retreat. And then for some reason, I just turned around and said, okay, we're going to do this. I'm going to have one. I'm never going to do it again. This is the one and only. And people are going, I'll come next time. And I'm like, no, this is the only time I'm doing it. You've missed out. As it turned out, I am doing it again next year. And next year, I should make a minimal profit. It still, again, will be a very minimal profit because that's not the intention. The intention is that it's more of a passion project than a money-making project. And it's to make sure that the people that I'm supporting get that additional support. And everybody absolutely loved the real retreat. And every single person gave me an audio review and every single person said how beneficial it was. And those that can come back have already said they're coming back next year. The ones that aren't away or having a baby, things like that. So it was a huge success. So there will be a few places available next year. And obviously it goes out to academy members first and to the people within my circles that I know that are paying me for other things. They might have done the 90-day program. They might be in the graduate program. So I have to know them. People don't just get to come because I have to personally send the link. So what did we do on the retreat? Well, the virtual retreat was really cool and everybody loved the sticky steps and everybody loved the, the beetle. And everybody loved the goals, the the part of the goal setting systems and the activation systems that I used. Everyone on the in person retreat absolutely loved it as well and really gained from it. And that they did those things too. But of course, that one to one time with me and those hot seats. Now, one of the girls had said before she came, or women had said before she came, What is a hot seat? I don't understand this hot seat thing. You keep saying hot seat. And I said, Well, basically, it's you. You think up your question. So one of the ladies who was on, she's pregnant and she needed to get things organized for when the baby's born. Now, because there is paid maternity leave in Australia, if you're taking paid maternity leave, you cannot earn money while you're on paid maternity leave. So there was a lot of structure around her having an intake for a program before she gave birth and how she would do that. So working out the launch sequence, the programming for that, getting her email set up, figuring out how she was to use the emails to support her doing those things. So she asked those questions and we nutted it out. There were a number of occasions where we had the hot seat with her. And so we were able to nut out. So it's kind of like the 90 day program, but everybody was together. And so you have lots of other brains and people pitching in and helping, but it was very reliant on me. And so the one downside was I'd done the virtual retreat at the same time as the in-person retreat, which is why it was like, well, this is a cost-neutral situation, whereas next time that was an outcome or a a suggestion is the virtual retreat will actually occur before the in-person retreat. So next time it's slightly more expensive, but it will still be, so it won't be this cost-neutral because I'm not doing the virtual retreat at the same time. So it was an incredible with Thursday to Sunday. And it was totally action-packed. We literally worked. We, I went to the airport with everybody, with the people who were flying out. Not everybody, not everybody flew out. Some people were from Adelaide. So I went to the airport and those last few people, before they flew out, they got additional time as well. So there really was quite intensive. We went to the market. We went to the Jalik farm. It was totally fun. And it will happen now again next November. So here's me saying, I'm never doing it again, never, ever, ever doing it again. And I am doing it next November. But like this year, I'm keeping it small. I'm keeping it really small. So this year, the maximum of seven. And next year, there will be a maximum of, I think it's nine in the house. Okay. So still keeping it super, super small, very exclusive. So that was some of the things that hadn't gone as well was doing 
the virtual retreat at the same time as the in-person retreat, but I'd had to do that for cost neutral and financial reasons. So, but that won't happen next year. So discovering what worked well and what didn't work well has really helped me towards November next year and the retreat process. Now, my goals, while you're sitting there thinking about your intentions for next month, you can also think about your goals. So my goal for November was the Black Friday event. So I've and the Black Friday event has come, well, it's almost gone, but it hasn't really because I've just looked and I've messed up my time zones and things because I'm thinking oh, I have to do it in American time zone for the Black Friday event to finish. And of course, there's Cyber Monday. So in actual fact, it finishes on and I've gone and done it all wrong. So that it's actually still available, I think, at the moment because I've just put my timings and dates wrong. I just couldn't figure all that out. So yeah, so it's actually still available, but not advertised. So that's kind of so the goal, obviously, is to make a little bit of money at the end of the year to offer something that people really want and that they need at a cheaper price. So the Black Friday event for me is pediatric. So next year, there will be something pediatric again for Black Friday. But what I did wrong as part of that, and I did right at the same time, I guess, was at the very beginning of that email sequence, I said, if you're interested in the Black Friday, reply yes to this email and I'll keep you posted. Now, I didn't say it was pediatric. (laughs) Went back, had a look, didn't say. So it just says, you know, if you're interested, and when I look through those names, a number of those people are not pediatric focused people at all. So I'm in the process of writing an email to everybody who said yes, to offer them 50% off my confident consulting for practitioners, for one-to-one practitioners. And then I'm also going to offer that out to all of everyone at 30% off so that we can have a couple of sessions, one before Christmas and one in the new year with that group. So I realized that I'd offered them something and then they probably would have looked and gone, hey, Geraldine, you said you're going to offer something, but you haven't actually offered something for me. This is pediatric. So that was kind of a good and a bad, but it means that I now have a goal to send that out, to fix up that page, to make it ready so that those people have a really good discount, a really good offering for something. It's not Black Friday, it's not Cyber Monday. It's just because I messed up at the beginning of a sequence of emails. So what actions do I need to reach my goal? Just like what actions do you need to take to reach your goals? Well, I've got to send out those emails to the people who said yes. There are about 30 people who said yes, so I need to send out the emails to them. Then I need to send out the emails to the rest of my cohort, the rest of my email subscribers. If you want to receive my emails, then just PM me with your email address and I'll just add it to Flowdesk if you're not getting them already. So what actions do I need to take to reach my goals? What actions do you need to take to reach your goals? For me to reach my goals, I have to set up a new email sequence. I have to fix up the confident consulting for the one-to-one practitioner page. And I have to make sure everybody knows about it before Christmas. Because actually, it's a pretty good Christmas gift if you want somebody to buy you a Christmas gift. Because there's a session, maybe I won't have a session before Christmas, so it can be a Christmas gift. That's a good idea, isn't it? I'll have to have a look at that. Thank you for helping me out there. So your input was excellent. So what actions do I need to take towards my goals and what actions do you need to take towards yours? Mine are all on the computer, mine are email and landing page. And my other goals, of course, are to have a good time. So I might actually make myself a little packing list. I think a packing list for going away since I have back-to-back appointments all of this week. So a packing list for leaving on Monday would probably be a good idea. Because normally I'd have the weekend to pack, but my husband is running the half marathon at Victor Harbour. So I'm going to be at Victor Harbour for the weekend and again, not packing. So that might be a bit of a goal. So how did your November go? And what are your intentions, goals and expectations for December and January? Remember that the worksheet is on the website and the link to that is in the show notes. So I hope you have an absolutely brilliant rest of day, no matter what you're doing. And I hope you enjoy December where we've got all of the chats with all of the amazing people. We've got some phenomenal people coming up. I spoke with Daniel Baden. I've spoken with Carly McLean. I've spoken with um, Jill Standard. I've spoken with lots of people and they're all coming up for you to really enjoy. So I'm looking forward to December and I hope you are too. And the chats that I've got stored away. Have a good one. If you've made it all the way to the end, don't forget, I would love a five-star review. So thank you for the end of the year. Would be really cool. 
So if you could remember to do that, you just scroll down on whatever app you're using and say five stars and say, I've loved it this year. Thank you very much, Geraldine. I've learned heaps. Would be a fantastic review. So have an absolutely brilliant one. And I look forward to catching up with you all in the new year. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.